Hello, my name is Nirmal Karthik, and today I will explain to you the physics of Atwood machines. Invented by English mathematician George Atwood in 1784, the Atwood machine is a simple device consisting of a system of masses connected to either end of a nearly massless string and a nearly frictionless pulley over which the string passes. Although over 200 years old, Atwood machines are still relied on to demonstrate the laws of accelerated motion. However, on a small scale, these machines have a hard time capturing the relationship between mass and acceleration. So my friend Kyle and I decided to build a 16-foot Atwood machine to show you how acceleration functions in a system of masses. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's start with a little trivia. Pictured in front of you is the Atwood machine we built with three different systems of masses. System A is 1.25 kilograms and 2.5 kilograms. System B is 2.5 kilograms and 3 kilograms and system C is 1.5 kilograms and 2 kilograms. So the question, which system of masses will generate the greatest acceleration? If you guess system A, you are correct. But I know what some of you are thinking. Shouldn't system B, the system with the heaviest masses, or system C, the system with the lightest masses, have the greatest acceleration? Well, not exactly, because it turns out the masses themselves don't matter. So if acceleration doesn't relate to mass, what does it relate to? Let's explain. The key is ratios. While the total mass of the system is meaningless in regards to acceleration, the ratio of the difference between the system's two masses to its total mass is the only influence on its acceleration. To understand why, we need to draw something called a free body diagram, which pictures the forces or force components acting on a center of mass. Both masses only have two forces acting on them, tension and weight force. We also know that the acceleration of both masses is the same in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Lastly, we know that the tension force on both masses is also the same in magnitude, but opposite in direction. While this last point is a little less obvious, it becomes clear when you consider that the pulley has negligible friction and the string has negligible mass. While the string accelerates with the masses relative to the masses, the string's mass itself is zero. Hence, by Newton's second law, the net force on the string must also be zero. Furthermore, the only forces on the string are the forces exerted on it by both its masses. The pulley underneath it has negligible friction, so it exerts negligible forces on the string. Hence, by Newton's second law, the two forces on either end of the string must be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And applying Newton's third law, we see that this means that the tension forces exerted by the string on the masses are also equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. All right, it's equation time. Using Newton's second law, we can set up equations for the net force on each mass and solve both for the tension. Now, we can set the equations equal and solve for the acceleration. With our equation solved, we see that the acceleration of the system of masses is equal to the gravitational acceleration multiplied by the ratio of the difference in mass over the total mass. So what does this tell us? Conceptually, this reveals that the greater the relative difference between mass A and mass B, the larger the acceleration. As mass A increases, the difference between mass A and mass B also increases, so the ratio of this difference to the total mass increases. As we see in the equation, this means a greater acceleration. Likewise, an increase in mass B also results in a greater magnitude of acceleration, but in the opposite direction. Equally interesting is that if both the masses increase by the same amount, the relative difference actually decreases, resulting in a smaller acceleration. However, if both the masses decrease by the same amount, the relative difference increases, indicating a greater acceleration. With this new knowledge, let's take another look at that trivia. In system A, the ratio of the difference in masses to the total mass is 1 to 3. In system B, the ratio is 1 to 11, and in system C, it's 1 to 7. Based on this, we can predict that system A will accelerate the fastest, followed by system C, and system B will move the slowest. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe to our channel and visit our website for more content. Karthik out.